If this is the Great Basin Fire Potential Outlook from June through September 2018. A look at uh, not just our outlook, but some of the components that go on into producing it. And the first thing that we'll take a look at will be the wintertime precipitation from October through the end of April. You can see that uh, below normal averages less than 50%, some cases 25% or less across our southern and southeastern areas as well as southern Nevada. Only areas that were near to slightly above normal were some of the higher mountains across central Idaho as well as into western Wyoming, but even there, some pockets of drier conditions. Now we look at the winter precipitation of the past two seasons. Again, here is our most recent winter here on the right-hand side. Uh, the winter of 2016-2017 was a quite different, showed above normal to much above normal precipitation, 2 to 300 percent of normal across Wyoming, Idaho, and the northern tier of Nevada. And it's those lower elevations across southern Idaho, uh, northern Nevada, parts of northern Utah, where we had an exceptional grass crop last year and still a pretty good supply of carryover fuel to this year in areas that have not burned. Uh, we have had some wet weather recently that could add to this. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But given the recent dry weather that we've had across our southern and eastern areas, you can see that we are in exceptional drought across the four corners into southeast Utah, now stretching up into a good portion of the higher terrain of uh, central Utah. So again, this is a concern uh, mainly for the higher terrain, which could affect heavier fuels with a reduced snowpack. For lower elevations, this means that grass crop uh, may not be as abundant. These drought conditions are expected to continue and then progress northwards as we go through the summer months. And as we spoke of before, the snowpack, and we look at peak snowpack typically at the end of March, early April, about uh, 50 to 60 percent of normal across Utah and Nevada, uh, closer to normal as you head into the mountains of western Wyoming and uh, some of the mountains, higher terrain areas of central Idaho. Now, taking a look at precipitation the past couple of months, this is April. We had some good wetness in western uh, Wyoming, parts of Idaho, fairly dry elsewhere across the southern two-thirds of the geographic area. It was also warmer than normal as well. Now, the May uh, pattern is a bit more chaotic. We had a couple of weather systems come through the middle to latter part of May, two or three of them, fairly long duration, cool, showery patterns across Nevada, parts of Utah, and up into Idaho. Uh, really changed the fuel landscape quite a bit in terms of how quickly things were drying out, even though temperatures here on the right-hand side were uh, above normal. A look at our latest fuels. Uh, these are 100-hour fuels already at critical levels as we go from near Las Vegas towards St. George, also into south uh, eastern Utah, below 5% is about as dry as we get, and even this next orange shade, 6 to 10%, is fairly dry if grasses are also cured through that area. Uh, the 1,000 hour fuels, the heavier fuels, are quite dry across the southern third of our area, across at least half of Utah, down into the single digits. That's something we don't normally see until we're in the uh, latter part of June, still quite moist across uh, Idaho and Wyoming. A look at our ERCs and uh, looking at percentiles, you can see that things are quite moist across about three quarters of our area, maybe four fifths. It is uh, southern Idaho where uh, some of our more critical ERCs are above the 80th percentile, and that's where we do have some major concerns. Looking at Nevada, where we did have above normal uh, fire projections for this coming June, things have changed with some of that wet weather that we've had in May. Uh, I can see that across north central Nevada, live fuel moistures are now above normal. That's a result of some of that wetness we've had in May. That set things back a little bit. However, we look towards some of our more critical areas down in southern and southeast Utah, as well as the Arizona Strip. You can see in southeast Utah, um, ERCs are at uh, record dry levels. So uh, again, not a great grass crop in the lower elevations, but across uh, north and east aspects, as well as timbered areas, things are at midsummer dryness also following not too far behind across the uh, monument section of Utah and the Arizona Strip. So we look at this drought, weather, fuel, snowpack, uh, a lot of it from the past up to the current. What happens from here is mostly with the weather and climate that's expected over the next few days. 
Uh, we look at the 6 to 10 day outlook, takes us into the end of the first week, into the start of the second week of June. A good signal of drier than normal conditions across a good portion of the area, especially across southern and eastern areas. Uh, fairly dry as well, and of course even areas that are normal here in Nevada and Utah uh, for June, normal means uh, uh, fairly little in the way of any precipitation, so the fuel should continue to dry. We also look at El Nino, La Nina, or La Nada to see what may develop as we go through the summer into the early fall. Now a look at El Nino conditions, which is uh, warmer than normal water across the equatorial Pacific. We actually take a cross section of it, the South American coast being here on the right hand side, Australia on the left, and uh, the top of the water here is at the top of the chart, kind of a side view of a fish tank, uh, 100, 200, up to 450 meters of depth, and you can see this much above normal warmth. Uh, down here about 150 meters down, about uh, 3 to 5 degrees Celsius above normal. Uh, this water is angling upwards and should start to not only end the recent weak La Nina, but uh, transition us into an El Nino pattern of some sorts, probably not nearly as strong as the last one a couple of years ago, but this should possibly start uh, very shortly. And looking at our climate models, which predict what the uh, ENSO signal will do for the next uh, 12 months or so, you can see that uh, the El Nino shades of uh, weak, moderate to strong uh, in the varying shades of red, and conversely with La Nina, most of the low range models project into the uh, weak to possibly low end moderate uh, El Nino category as we head into the late summer and fall. Uh, that could play a role perhaps in uh, either disrupting the monsoon late in the season, uh, maybe blocking any cold air outbreaks that would occur in the fall or late summer coming out of central Canada. So we'll keep an eye on that progression. And looking at the uh, one month outlook for June, uh, a drier than normal signal across Idaho and a warmer than normal signal than uh, across everywhere else, uh, no real wet signals uh, to speak of. Uh, the three-month outlook, June through August, and uh, looks like the monsoonal signal will continue uh, across the four corners. Uh, again, a lot of this is normal, but this should diminish fire activity in some of the southern Utah areas that we're most concerned about. But across our northern areas, we should continue to main, remain dry and warm, hence our focus shifting towards Idaho as we go through later in fire season. So putting all of the pieces together and looking at uh, the outlook for June. Now notice we've eliminated uh, northern Nevada from this outlook for now. Uh, it'll come back into play later on, maybe even more intensely into July, but our above normal continues across uh, eastern and uh, southern Utah. Also a below normal area for western Wyoming where uh, they had an above average snowpack, a very cool moist May, uh, expecting uh, minimal problems as we head into June. Now for July, uh, it looks like whatever moisture we've gotten and whatever new grass comes out will cure out and combine with the carryover fuel from last year. So again, uh, above average risk across a good portion of the northern third of Nevada into parts of northwest and north central Utah, also into the lower elevations of southwest and south central Idaho. As we go into August, uh, those areas stay in play and we actually start becoming concerned about the higher terrain of Idaho as we are expecting above normal warmth and dryness to continue, which although things will be quiet in the short term, could be quite significant as we get into August. Now, uh, we didn't carry those effects into September. September is a tricky month. It's a transition month where we often get sometimes, uh, if not a season ending event, at least a season slowing event. And those we can't normally see until we get a few weeks uh, uh, towards that period. So we'll call it normal for now, but areas that we'll have to watch will remain our northern areas. And if the uh, monsoon dries up uh, quicker than expected, if El Nino continues to progress, it could be that some of our southern areas could come into play, but a bit too much uncertainty at this point. So look nationally at what the maps look like, and you can see that um, the southwest, along with parts of southern Utah, uh, are the main concern. As we go into uh, uh, July, it's back into northwestern Nevada and a large portion of Idaho. And into August, uh, it's the northern areas, not just across uh, parts of Idaho and northern Nevada and Utah for us, but across a good portion of Montana, the Pacific Northwest, adjacent areas of northeastern California. 
and then we'll see how that transitions into September. This area shrinks. We're uh, not quite sure exactly um, how our weather will play out. A lot of it will depend on the progressing El Nino. This concludes our seasonal outlook. Have a great day. The next outlook will be issued on the 1st of July.